I've been called out to many homes to troubleshoot why a homeowner's furnace isn't working. And I'll get there and find out that a part has failed and needs to be replaced. But as an experienced technician, I always wanna make sure that I inspect the firebox or the heat exchanger inside that furnace. The reason why every good technician does this is to make sure that the furnace is safely operating to factory specs. The manufacturer would never send out a cracked heat exchanger. So how do they fail? Operating a furnace in any one of these conditions can cause a heat exchanger to fail because it puts a lot of stress in the form of expansion and contraction over several years. Knowing that, you can surmise that cracks and breaks will form over time because of the constant bending of the metal. One reason why heat exchangers fail is because the furnace is oversized. It's normal for a cool metal firebox or heat exchanger and a hot flame to temporarily create a bit of condensation inside the tubing or the chamber of them. An oversized furnace will not evaporate that condensation completely because oversized furnaces tend to short cycle. They turn on and off more frequently than they should because they're so powerful that they warm up the house too quickly. Too much rust will drill a hole in that tubing or chamber and you'll have a failed heat exchanger. Number two, not enough return air. The system wants to give you a certain amount of air to warm your home. The furnace will only give you what it gets from the return duct. That's the duct or plenum attached to the grill where you change your filter. Those of us in the industry know that a lot of systems installed before, let's say 2015, were installed with return ducts that were too small. The heat exchanger is designed to see a certain amount of air pass over it with the correct amount of gas input. Too small of a return duct will restrict the amount of air that can enter that furnace and cause the firebox to expand and contract too much, causing it to break sooner than it should. Number three, dirty filters. Another way to slow down the proper amount of air flowing across the heat exchanger is to have a dirty filter. Filters come in several thicknesses, one inch all the way to five inches. You can have any size and any thickness for a filter, but if it becomes impacted with dirt, dust, skin, hair, and whatever else clings to it, the filter restricts airflow like the return duct that we discussed in number two. Number four, household chemicals. Believe it or not, corrosion can form on the heat exchanger. Things like hairspray, fabric softeners, and bleach can enter the airstream, pass the filter, and attach to the heat exchanger for good. Over time, the chemicals bore a hole through that metal and cause it to fail. Number five is something called off-gassing. Let's say you have a home remodel or new construction. Running the furnace during the construction and even afterwards will expose the heat exchanger to off-gassing. What is off-gassing? Like the smell of that fresh paint? Off-gassing. New carpet smell? Off-gassing. And many of those new products keep off-gassing long after that new smell wears off. It's just more subtle. And just like household chemicals, it'll contribute to the overall degradation of the furnace heat exchanger. Number six, frozen evaporator coils. Ever had a refrigerant leak in the summertime cause your air conditioning system to freeze up? Well, vertical furnaces and evap coil combos leave the heat exchanger below that evaporator coil drain pan. When a frozen evaporator coil melts, it tends to melt rapidly enough that it overflows or straight drips down onto the metal down below the heat exchanger, and that causes corrosion over time. Number seven is poor manufacturing design. There are clamshell, serpentine, and tubular heat exchanger designs. Let's talk about the clamshells first. Clamshells tend to fail in the back of the chamber, but it's tough to get an inspection mirror back there for inspection purposes. A process called hydroscan is used to identify cracks in these types of heat exchangers, and it's very effective if it's done right and if the professional is looking in the right spots. It definitely takes a trained eye. The second one are serpentine designs, and serpentine designs are pressed together with the middle areas held together with rings or eyelets. The eyelets on serpentine designs tend to deform, pop off, and crack. And if the manufacturer wouldn't send a heat exchanger out into the field with cracked or missing eyelets, a technician who later finds them like that should fail your heat exchanger for not meeting manufacturer specs. And the next one, tubular designs, are newer and, in my opinion, superior to clamshells and serpentines. And many others will agree with me on that. 
They're usually made with stainless steel and bent into form at the factory. The ends of those tubes are stamped into the collector box and faceplate of the burner compartment. And it's at that connection where some of the tubular designs fail. Corrosion plays a big part in tubular heat exchangers failing. Eventually, that moisture, condensation, chemicals, and gases that we discussed earlier can infiltrate these tubes and cause them to fail. And 90% of the time, those failures happen at the back of the tubes on the first bend. Gas furnaces are very safe. Most people prefer the warmth emitted by gas furnaces. They're cozy. Ensuring that furnaces are installed correctly is almost 100% of the battle. Choosing a reputable contractor is important because they'll read the manuals and abide by the building codes that mandate a proper installation. And then homeowners need to make sure that those filters are replaced regularly. Well, hopefully this helps you understand why heat exchangers fail. If this is your first time watching our channel, please click subscribe down here on the bottom right. And if you click that little bell next to it, you'll be notified of all of our videos as they come out. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next video. You're watching Fox Family Heating and Air. Don't forget to subscribe. And check out more of our videos by clicking on the right side of the screen.